Trek. Thanks for tuning in and watching. It is January 4th, 2018, currently 9.30 p.m. Um, I come to you as my, with my first video of 2018 um, in a very different state of mind that I was going to be making my video earlier today. Uh, my video I wanted to make was like an update video telling you guys what I was going to you know, have planned for the year, um, my short-term and long-term plans for the next 365 days. Um, very positive outlook and after I got to reading, doing some research online, that definitely took a turn and I have some bad news for the state of Kansas. So if you are a state of Kansas resident, stay tuned and listen to this video. I have some important stuff uh, for you to be paying attention to for the 2018 legislative session in Topeka. So to get this going, we have a very pro-gun state. We are a very pro-gun state. And within the last five to six years, we've had a lot of pro-gun bills passed in Topeka. Uh, in 2013, House or Senate Bill 45 passed, and that allowed the, op the open carrying of firearms throughout the state without any cities or municipalities regulating how it's done. Um, and so that passed and went into effect, and it's been great. There was no wildlife shooting as long corners. Uh, in 2015, we had the passage of House Bill 2578. Now, 2578 was a bill that allowed the constitutional carry of firearms in the state of Kansas without a license. That is awesome. Um, something that has been going across the country. Um, I, don't, I can't remember what number of state we were that passed constitutional carry, but being one of the forefronts of constitutional carry is awesome. Now, this isn't just... Uh, you know, national constitutional carry. This is in the state. Now, of course, there are the the concealed carry reciprocity, um, you know, bills that have been passed that have been introduced federally and stuff, and not really going any far or any further than they were at the time. Um, but um, in the state of Kansas itself, being able to carry a firearm concealed without a license is one of the greatest freedoms we can have. Now, in 2017, there weren't a whole lot of pro-gun or anti-gun bills to report on, so my reporting on, in, of the legislative session of 2017 was absolutely almost nothing. Uh, I think I made a, a video at the beginning of the year, and I said, hey, these are the things that were proposed, and it, it, they even went very far. I didn't even get a minute to, to make a video over it, so I didn't make a video over it. But what did happen in 2017 was the sunset of the four-year exemption of public places banning the carrying of firearms um, in their facilities, such as in universities and the hospitals and court courtrooms and stuff, or courthouses. Now, in 2013, we passed 257, or Senate Bill 45, which was the open carry bill. And at the time, they made a bill that said within the next four years, they had to allow the carrying of firearms in these public places. Um, now, this is extremely important to remember. Um, this sunsetted July 1st, 2017, if I remember. So, that meant several very, very good things. Number one, college students who were you know, of legal age to carry a firearm concealed could do so on college campuses because there is a high amount of crime and rapes and that kind of stuff going on. So why wouldn't you allow a college student, whether it be a male or female, to defend themselves? Um, and then there are you know shootings in hospitals all the time and, and, and courtrooms and that kind of stuff. And within that, 2017 was a wishy-washy year. So, on July 1st, after July 1st, 2017, college students could carry a firearm concealed on, on their college campuses. Along with that same bill was supposedly the sunsetting of carrying a firearm in courtrooms and, and the University of Kansas Hospital, to be specific, because it is a public, you know, taxpayer-paid um, hospital. And so, they sat around for four years and did not make a plan and they, did, they decided you know within the last the last three months of uh the bill before a sunset 
they didn't have a plan. They didn't have the money to afford guards or uh, metal detectors and that kind of stuff. So they just wanted to not let us carry a firearm in their building as they were supposed to. And so um, some anti-gunners got all up in arms and stuff and finally decided, hey, we're going to go back to the legislative session and pass a specific, uh, you know, special bill. And I can't remember what it was now, but it wasn't worth reporting on really. But basically in the end, they made an exemption. I don't know if it's an ex extension necessarily or a full on never ending thing for places like the University of Kansas Hospital and other public places. Universities are exempt from that, but um, you cannot carry in the University of Kansas Hospital and that basically goes against the whole sunsetting of the bill. So there wasn't a whole lot to report on that in the year. But what did happen? July 1st, 2017, college students were able to carry concealed firearms on university campuses. Within a week, there, were, there was one firearm that was left in a University of Kansas bathroom, supposedly on the toilet roll, or toilet roll um, uh, holder. And I think maybe a month or two later, there was another firearm left somewhere. I don't remember where, where it was exactly, but it was supposedly left you know, unattended in a public place. And it was very clear from my perspective that these were planted firearms. You know, really, you're gonna go all this time, all these years without allowing firearms on the campuses or wherever, and no, no, you know, criminals would ever carry a firearm there. But then within a week, somebody supposedly took their firearm out of their holster and put it up on top of a toilet roll holder. I don't believe that. That's a very interesting uh, way of looking at stuff. So. Um, I do believe both cases were planted, but what is stemmed from that are two very important anti-gun bills that are very dangerous to the state of Kansas and the Second Amendment here in the state. Um, and they were just proposed a week and a half, two weeks ago, well, actually December 28th they were proposed, and it is January 4th right now, and they go in January 5th, so Friday, tomorrow. I don't know what time they... Um, go in actually um, it doesn't say but these are two bills that were introduced by two separate bills introduced by separate Democrat leaders here in the state of Kansas and they are House Bill 2442 and House Bill 2443 House Bill 2442 is um, was proposed by Democrat legislator uh, Vic Miller of District 58, which I do believe is uh, Topeka, and House Bill 2443 was introduced by um, Representative Dennis Boog Heiberger, a Democrat out of Lawrence, or District 43. Now, these are very important bills and very nasty bills if they were to get very far because Going back to 2017, the legislators passed the bill that said you could not carry, or they put the boat, the, uh, the bill that you could not carry or you could carry a firearm in the University of Kansas Hospital. It overwhelmingly won with middle of the road Republicans and Democrats. That's where that came from. And here's the thing it went back to, it could have went to Sam Brownback's desk and he could have vetoed it or would do what he did and not sign it and let it become a bill. A, a, you know, a bill. He let it just go on its way and become a, you know, become a bill and that's very, very bad because Sam Brownback's on, a, on his way out, hopefully, and that's not what we need right now. So House Bill 2443, we'll start with that one. It is a bill and citing here from the list of things that have been proposed, a bill creating the crime of unlawful abandonment of a firearm. Now, and I do believe when you open the bill up, it says in a public place. So the very first section one, subsection A, 
Unlawful abandonment, abandonment of a firearm is abandoning or otherwise leaving the firearm in a public place where such firearm may be accessible to a person other than the owner of such firearm with no requirement of culpable mental state. Now, I, this is a very, I mean, it's only 22 lines, um, very, very short bills, so I, I don't know where it's going to go at, but they could include this to include your car, your your vehicle as a public place. If you're in a public parking lot and you leave your car, your firearm in there unattended, whether it's in a safe or not, we don't know. I don't know what, what's going to happen with this. Um, these always get tied into the other bills and they add things and you know the little amendments and stuff. This is a very nasty bill. So you're going to tell me that I can't leave my firearm in a public place? Because where does that public place, or the quote unquote, public place end? Now, some people are going to say, well, yeah, it, it gets rid of the person who's going to, or it would make it a criminal or a crime to leave your firearm on that toilet roll holder, which I do understand that. But there's no end, or there's really no black or white there. It's pretty much a gray area as to what the word public place, or the phrase public place, where it ends. So we'll watch. House Bill 2443, uh, and then the next one was 2442, of course. And this bill, starting by the, the short title quote of it, is the prohibiting of the possession of bump stocks and or similar devices or attachments for the semi-automatic firearm. So, there are people in the state of Kansas who think that bump stocks make your firearm more deadly or things that make your firearm, you know, firearm fire faster. Um, this is kind of nasty because, like I said, in 2017, middle of the road Republicans and Democrats combined to make anti-gun legislation. Five or six years before that, we were, we were good. We were above water. Now Topeka is dipping their heads in, their, in the sand and doing some nasty things. So, we'll open up 2442 real fast, and I'll see what the first section says. So the first section, well, well I'll read the um, phrase of the person. Basically, I, I'm not a professional um, bill reader yet. I'm trying to get there. An act concerning crimes, punishment, and criminal procedure relating to firearms prohibiting the possession of certain devices or attachments used for the simulation of automatic firearms. Section one, uh, the bill number and everything, is hereby amended to read as follows. Criminal use of firearm or weapons in knowing, is knowingly selling, manufacturing, pur purchasing, or possessing any bludgeon, sand club, uh, metal knuckles, or throwing star possession or, with the intent of the same, unlawfully against another, or a dagger. Okay, okay I'm not going to read all this because there's... You know, there's only six, five pages, but it doesn't seem like it's really pertaining in the beginning, or it's not even really an amendment, it's like another bill, but it's not really pertaining to um, the possession of uh, bump stocks, except for the, the very first thing. And the, best, the rest of it is talking about slug shots and knives and straight edge razors and stuff that are legal here in the state of Kansas. Um, so, House Bill 2442 and House Bill 2443, guys. I will, um, hope, hopefully I can do it tonight, um, get the links down below in the comments section. And I will be sure to be updating you guys as much as possible. These bills do have... Um, Usually when they go on to the Federal and State Affairs Committees, you can um, listen to them live. And when they go into debate and stuff, they can usually listen to them live stream. Um, now, the thing is now, I, I went to days. I used to work nights. I worked nights for the last eight years. And so my schedule was very, very bad then to do videos and stuff. But now it's kind of the things that are important to me are happening on the days that I'm at work. So... Um, I apologize if they're not happening in the live stream or I'm not updating you guys right away, maybe that night, but 
I'm going to be watching these bills very closely along with anything else that these two Democrats, Vic Miller and um, Dennis Heiberger, what they propose later on and any other Democratic uh, anti-gun legislation that is proposed, I will be warning you as soon as I can. So follow me on Instagram at MidAmericaPrep and on Facebook at MidAmericaPrep. I have not been posting a whole lot on Facebook, but with this stuff going on, I will be doing so. So anyways, keep coming, carry on, stay safe. See you later.